Have you ever found yourself in a moment of panic during a chemistry exam where you're trying to frantically remember a formula that you just learned yesterday but nothing's coming up in your brain and you're getting all panicky and suddenly you can't even remember your own name? Don't worry, this has happened to me as well long, long back when I was a student. So I used to write my chemistry exam and then there's this formula, let's take an example. Uh, hmm. Chatri Kuna plus Navo gives not to Ko 3 plus Chafur. <laughs> What's that? Well, that's basically the methane reaction. Okay, it's CH3CO NA plus NaOH gives Na2CO3 plus CH4. <laughs> this is not how you should remember it. But yeah, this is how I used to remember it. But then there was this time where I tried remembering this in my exam and just nothing came up. Has this ever happened to you? If this has, don't worry. I'm going to teach you a secret sauce that's going to prevent this from ever happening again. So first, let's understand memory, okay? Memory is like this complicated relay race that's happening in a thick Amazonian jungle. Wait, wait, stay with me. Let me explain. So this relay race has three runners, okay? The first runner is called encoding. Okay, this guy basically takes the baton from wherever you're studying it from, let's say from a textbook. He runs all the way into your brain and goes and gives it to the second guy whose name is Storage. Storage takes the baton again, runs through this jungle and goes and stores it in some secret vault in the jungle. Okay, that's that's like the first part. And then the third part, the third part is called Retrieval. He's the guy who takes the baton from the storage area and runs back to you whenever you want to bring it back in an exam. Okay, sir, this sounds interesting. Then why does it feel like I'm grasping at clothes every time I try to remember something after putting hours and hours studying before the exam? That's probably because you're doing one of two wrong ways of learning. Okay, and these two mistakes I used to do all the time as a student, right? So let's take this example. We have this big chemical equation, right? To, to memorize for my chemistry exam. So what do I do? Say about two, three days before the exam or you know, even for a few weeks before the exam, I take my book, I look at my textbook and I, oh, I've highlighted this chemical equation. I keep reading this again. Ah, okay, CH3CO, NA plus NA, blah, 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 blah. You will see it, sure. Okay, cool. The next day, I do the same thing again. I look at this equation, read it again, right? This process is called rereading or review. What you're doing here is you're taking that information and just using that first process, right? Encoding. You're just using that first runner again and again. You're just practicing encoding. The second wrong way that you're probably using is slightly better, but still not the best. Okay? It's called recognition. What you probably do is you, okay, you're going through some examples. You're probably going through some solid examples. And then you see there's a question which is, hey, which is the correct chemical equation for this, right? The evolution of methane, yes. What's the correct chemical equation? So you see some four four options out of which one is correct, right? So all, what you're doing right now is you're looking at those four options and then you're trying to figure out which is right, you're trying to recognize which is the right one. This is called recognition. This is still better than the previous method, but still not completely effective because what you're doing is you're using the help of external data here to still try to figure out what's the right answer. So what is this secret sauce that's hidden in this jungle of learning that's gonna make your memory as strong as a silverback gorilla? The joke is credits to ChatGPT, okay. The answer is retrieval practice, okay. Practicing the third guy, the third runner that's coming from that storage area all the way back. So retrieval or recall is probably the most underutilized and underpracticed part of your memory trifecta, okay. The third part, the third runner basically. Because every time, most often when you read or I read, when we used to read, we always practice the first two parts. We only think about reviewing and we practice encoding. Retrieving is when you actively try to recall and bring that information out of your brain without any external help. Now let's take an example. So the same, you know, methane gas, you know, formula, right, or chemical equation. What you do is in, the next time you're trying to learn it, instead of looking at a textbook and reading it and saying, oh, cool, I know this, instead of doing that, take, use a flashcard, right, uh, on the, on the, First side of the flashcard, write down the name. Hey, a chemical equation for evolution of methane gas. That's it, right? Then look at this flashcard and then, okay, now this is an equation. How do I figure this out? How do I bring this back from memory? Think about it and actively try to recall. And then flip the flashcard and check if you're right or wrong. So cool, retrieval practice is the secret sauce. But don't wait, that's not enough. How else do you sharpen this sword of retrieval and recall? How do you make it even better? So first, try to practice recall immediately after you learn it. Let's say the first time you read it or learn something, try to recall it immediately. Don't do the mistake of waiting. Hey, you know what? I've read it. I probably remember it. I'll come back to it later, like, you know, a day later or a week later. Don't do that. Try to start off as close to the first learning experience as possible. Number two, try to recall in different ways. Don't just use a flashcard and say, okay, what? You know, this is the equation. Okay, this is the answer. I got it. That's what I've done. Don't do it like that. Try different ways. Try writing it down next time. Okay, once you've thought about it, next write it down. This is a different way. Maybe try explaining it to someone. I don't know, maybe if you have a family member, a sibling, or a grandmother, or a grandparent, call them and say, uh, hey, Chachi, or hey, Mama, hey, this is the answer. This is the way, like, methane gas is given out. So that you can practice other ways of recalling. Number three, recall frequently. Don't do just once or twice. 
right? Don't do it like once, hey, I've done this, okay, I've learned it, I've, I do a flashcard and then, I don't know, a day later, do it again, it's like, ha, huh, dude, I'm over. No, don't stop there. Try to do it more regularly. Try to do it, like, if you have an exam coming, try to recall it two to three times, or, you know, try to do it at least once a week at a regular pace. And lastly, try to retrieve and recall this information in different contexts, not just the same context. What I mean is, don't let, don't think about it only for the sake of the exam. Like, oh, okay, cool, in the exam, this question is going to come, therefore I'm going to remember. No. Think about it in maybe, okay, if I have to do this experiment, uh, if I have to do an experiment that involves methane, how will I bring this up? How will I do this? And how will I create methane? Right? So try to come up with different contexts where you can recall this information. So yeah, recall practice is that elixir, that secret elixir that's hiding inside the Amazonian jungle of your learning. <laughs> that's going to give you the superpower of super memory. So yeah, don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends or siblings, anyone who might benefit from this.